Hello Year 3 and welcome to our first English video lesson this week. This week we're going to be looking at a variety of different skills that's going to help us to be able to write an opening to a short story at the end of the week. Uh, thank you for all of your hard work with your English last week. So before we get started, today's date is Tuesday the 12th of January and our learning objective is to use varying sentence openers. And I'll talk a little bit more about why we're doing that as we go through the lesson. So just before we get started with the rest of today's lesson, just a couple of quick pointers from the work that I saw last week. Well done for all of your descriptions that you came up with for your character and setting uh, descriptions. I've been really, really impressed with them. Just remember to try and include as much detail as possible and not just write one or two sentences. Remember, we're looking for something similar to what you would be producing in your books in school. I know it's difficult. I know we're not there to help you and to guide you through it. But ideally, we're looking for a few paragraphs or so. This week, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to guide your reading and also into your writing. So we're going to be looking at planning together on Thursday's lesson as a video lesson. And then your writing lesson will be you producing your writing on your own. So we're going to focus a little bit more on the planning for things that you're going to be including this week. So our first question to think about today is how can we make our writing interesting? And this is the first point in the video where I want you to have a pause and I want you to have a think about what you could answer that question with. How are we going to make our writing interesting? Have a chat with someone that you're with. See if you can think of some ideas together and we'll have a look at them together in a minute. So I wonder what ideas you came up with. Here are a few ideas that I came up with that I think you could include to make your writing more interesting. First of all, we've got adjectives. We can use adjectives to help describe things. So rather than the man, we might describe it as the old creepy man, perhaps using that as our description from the reading that we've been doing around James and the giant peach. So there's lots of fantastic vocabulary, some excellent words that you can come up with. And as the week goes on, we're going to see if we can share those words and share those ideas. And you can use them in your writing later on in the week. The next one, if we go down on the left hand side, we've got adverbs. So we've got how things are happening. So we've got things like quickly or slowly, quietly, loudly, excitedly, frantically, nervously. So we've got lots and lots of things that we can think about that we could extend that adjective of being nervous into how you're doing something nervously. So by adding that ly suffix at the end of the word, we can often extend a, an adjective into an adverb. So there's lots of things there that we can do and we're going to have a look at those as we go through. The next one under there is quirky settings. Now I've put this one in because actually you might have a really good story, you might have a really interesting idea. But if it's based in somewhere that's a bit boring or there's not anything interesting going on in the place that you're writing this story about, sometimes it can make it quite difficult to get excited about when you're reading it. So by having a quirky setting, by having something that's going to make you think differently about it, whether it's a fantasy land or whether it's a, a school that's got a hidden door or something that's a little bit different, hopefully that might engage the reader a little bit. And if we keep going along the right hand side now, we've got verbs. Obviously, if you've got a story where no one's doing anything, if they're all stood still and talking, even talking is a verb, but actually it's going to be a little bit boring. So we want those interesting verbs. We want those different ideas of what those people in your story are going to be doing, which leads us on to interesting characters. You might have a really good story, but if you haven't got a character, 
it's again quite difficult to engage as a reader so you want to create these characters you want to describe them in such a way that the reader is really interested in who these people might be who these characters are and uh, hopefully that will help with the engagement of it and the last one i've put in is a good plot because i think actually this is really important if you've got all of the other things but your story's a bit rubbish actually it can be really difficult again for the reader to be interested in it and engage in it you might have some fantastic descriptions of characters you might have an excellent really creepy forest but if nothing happens and you haven't got a plot again it makes it difficult to make it interesting so these are all the things that we need to think about from an author's point of view as to how we're going to make our writing as interesting as possible and remember our learning objective is looking at sentence starters so we're going to look now at how this can help improve that sentence starters how we can use our sentence starters to help build in these ideas so I'm about to read this passage out and I want you to tell me what your thoughts are after I've finished reading it I want you to pause the video and I want you to have a quick think and a quick chat and see what you think about it it was a normal day for James it was cold outside it was a bit boring then something strange happened then another strange thing happened then one more strange thing happened. I already know what you're thinking because I've taught you for long enough now to know exactly what you're thinking. It's boring. It's got the same starting to the sentence at the beginning and it's a bit rubbish. And yes, I know that and I've done that to get you to think about the sentence starters and thinking about how we can improve our sentence starters to make it a bit more interesting. Now, it's still exciting, and you might decide to use some short, sharp sentences to help build that suspense when you're writing, if something a bit bizarre is happening. However, what we're looking at here is the fact that it is, it was, it was, it was, then, then, then. So it's very repetitive, it's a bit boring, it's a bit dull, there's not really any extra detail. So I think what we're going to try and do is we're going to see if we can look at how this could be improved. So here's my suggestion of how I think I could have improved that passage. So I'm going to read this out. I'm going to get you to pause the video, have a think about whether you think it's been improved or not and why and how I've managed to do that specifically looking at the sentence starters and then we're going to have a chat about that in a second. James awoke for another ordinary day. After he was dressed he set about his chores outside. Frantically the wind blew the leaves making his task of clearing them nearly impossible. Cobwebs were getting tangled in his hair as he tried to sweep leaves down from the window. I wonder if you thought that this was better if it had been improved on. Uh, looking specifically at our sentence starters, I certainly feel as if they're different. We've not got the same thing repeated. So we're going to have a look at this now and see if we can identify any of the different ways that I've improved those sentence starters. So the first one is James awoke. So we've got the noun of James as to who we're talking about, what, what it is that we're talking about and what they're doing. So the fact that they've woken up is our verb. And then our second sentence, we've got after he was dressed. So after is an adverb that we've used at the front of our sentence. In this context, it could also be used as a conjunction as well and we've then got in our second one we've got an adverb of frantically so it's describing me how the wind was blowing so we've got an adverb starting there to hook the reader in as to what is happening next and then the last one we've gone back to a noun the fact that the cobwebs were getting tangled in his hair 
So I think it's improved, but I still think there's some different techniques that we could use to maybe improve our sentences even more. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at four different examples of how we could change our sentence starters and use them in our writing. And then once we've gone through each of them, we're going to ask you to come up with your own sentences and complete a task to use a variety of sentence starters. Our first one then is to use a conjunction. We've got some examples here, which I'll read out. While Tom waited, the bus came. After they had dinner, they ate dessert. Although your menu has some healthy items, many are not good for you. So here we've got a conjunction that's been used at the start of our sentence. And remember, this worked quite well when we looked at doing this with the word although. Um, there were some conjunctions that it might not work quite as well with, things like and, things like but. But overall, we can use a conjunction to start a sentence as long as that sentence makes sense. We've got some other examples here of conjunctions that we might be able to use. So we've got despite, when, even though, because, however, so. What I'd like you to do is just to spend just a moment or two thinking about those other words that we've got there, those other conjunctions, and seeing if you could swap them for one of the sentences that's above, or maybe think of your own sentence that uses that particular conjunction. Hopefully you've been able to have a think about a sentence that you might be able to use one of those conjunctions for. And we're going to have a look now at our next sentence starter. Our next one is about using an adverb. So we saw this being used with the wind with frantically. And we've got a few other different examples here that we could use. Astonishingly, the bus arrived on time. Unfortunately, I cannot make it to your party. Cautiously, she removed the bandage. We've got some other suggestions of adverbs here. Sadly, crazily, disappointingly, regretfully, steadily, happily, slowly, mournfully, graciously. And I'm sure that there are lots more adverbs that you can think of. What I want you to do again is spend just a little bit of time thinking about a sentence that you could use one of those adverbs with, or indeed thinking about another adverb that you could use instead. Just pause the video here, have a quick think, and then I'm going to share one of my sentences with you for this one. So if we have a look at this sentence, and yes, I have been practicing my handwriting. Our sentence that I've come up with is, thankfully, he was safe. So I've used that adverb of, thankfully, he was safe. So quite a short sentence, didn't have to be a long one. But again, it's using that adverb at the start of the sentence. Um, I could use that in a different way. I could say, luckily, he was safe, or I could say, um, he was safe, luckily, but it, it doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't quite read as well as thankfully he was safe. So using an adverb at the front of a sentence, sometimes it can make a sentence that wouldn't normally make sense, make sense if you're using it correctly. So we're going to do some practices this week with using our adverbs to start our sentences. So well done for your sentences if you've been able to come up with one. If not, don't worry, we're going to have a look at a couple more different examples of sentence starters that you might prefer to use. Our next one is to use a noun or adjective. I really like this one because it's a little bit easier to use. We're thinking about a specific thing that we're writing about. We're going to start with that thing, that noun, for example, um, before we start writing the rest of our sentence. Or if we're describing something, we can start with that 
adjective. So here the examples are cobwebs spanned the corridor, so they're everywhere. Leaves fell as the wind blew. So we're starting with what are the leaves doing? They're falling as the wind is blowing. So we've got that um, extra little bit of detail in there with our conjunction of as as well. But this next one is an adjective and it's beautiful stars filled the sky. Again, a really short, simple sentence, but really effective because you're using that adjective as the start of it. So again, I want you to see if you can pause the video here and see if you can come up with a sentence that uses a noun or an adjective. And I'll see if I can come up with one for you as well. Hopefully you've been able to come up with a sentence. I apologise, my handwriting has slipped a little bit. I do apologise. And um, let's have a look at the sentence I've come up with. So I've got dangerous monsters lurked everywhere. Now, this is probably because I've started reading my Harry Potter books again. So apologies, I will try and make sure that there's not loads of Harry Potter things in here. So dangerous Potters lurked, dangerous monsters lurked everywhere and you can see that we've got that adjective of dangerous before our noun that we've uh, mentioned there so hopefully you've been able to come up with an example as well and we're going to have a look at one more so here we've got our last one and this is to use a verb and then to add an ing clause so we've got some examples giggling and laughing they ran to school Waiting for the others, Jade stared up at the sky. This is a little bit of a trickier one. And the reason it's tricky is because we've got two parts to it. The first part is where we're adding our ing suffix to some verbs. And once we've done that, we need to add that to a sentence that actually makes sense on its own already. So here, this part of the sentence that I've highlighted in green they ran to school, that could be a sentence on its own that would make sense. But what we've done is we've explained, expanded on that and put in that giggling and laughing, they ran to school. For example, you might have smiling and joking, they played in the park. So they played in the park makes sense on its own, but we've added that extra part of the fact that they were smiling and joking. Here on the next one, You've got that they were waiting for the others. So we've added the ing to our root word of wait. And then Jade stared up at the sky. So this part makes sense on its own. So again, you could have the monster attacked, but you might have the verbs at the beginning of spitting and frailing over the place, the monster attacked. Um, so we, we've got the, the difficult task of adding our ing suffix to a word and then we're adding it to a sentence or part of a sentence that already makes sense. So we've got that clause. So it is a bit of a tricky one, um, but I would like you to have a go at this if you can. And I want to see what sentences you're able to come up with when you do your tasks. Let's have a look at your tasks that you've got for this lesson together. So you've got three separate tasks, all of which are available on your assignment on Teams. And you've got the first one, which is to finish the sentences using the sentence starter given. So for this task, I've given you a sentence starter. You just need to finish the sentence. You need to type the rest of the sentence. And on the second one, it's asking you to select an appropriate sentence starter, which goes with the remaining sentence. So here I've given you the main part of the sentence, but I've missed the sentence starter. So you need to select a sentence starter that we've looked at in one of those things that we've looked at so far. Um, and I want you to see if you can create that sentence starter so that the rest of the sentence or the whole sentence makes sense. Your last one is I want you to write your own sentences using varying sentence openers to describe the scene where the old man gives James the white bag. So if you haven't yet listened to that, you will need to have a quick listen to the uh, chapter three of James and the Giant Peach. 
so that you know what the scene is that you're going to be writing about. It doesn't have to be a long, long piece of writing, but I am after at least four sentences so that you can try and use one of each of the different types of sentence starters that we've had a look at in this morning's lesson. Once you've done that, there is a challenge question for you to look at, but I want you to concentrate on getting these three tasks done first. If you do get onto the challenge, your challenge is to explain what the effect is of using a variety of different sentence openers on the reader. So we've looked at it so far this morning about how we're going to write those sentence starters and some examples of what we could do to make that more interesting. But I want you to think now about what is the effect on the reader of using those different sentence openers. If you need to reread the re-watch the video, um, we were looking at that uh, some of those things a little bit earlier on that you might want to include. You might have your own ideas, which is absolutely fantastic. So well done for making it this far. If you have made it to the end of this English video for this morning, what I'm going to ask you to do is to upload your work once you've completed it and I will give you some feedback on it. Well done for all of your efforts that you've done so far. I've been really, really impressed. It's been absolutely fantastic to see that you're all doing your work at home and thank you so much for all your grown-ups for, for their support as well. It is really, really appreciated and I look forward to seeing all of your exciting work that you're going to do for me today. Thank you very much, Year 3.